back to another edition, episode, whatever, of Screwless Homestead. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Screwless Homestead. And today we're going to be cleaning up what my wife calls Blake's garden. We got some daffodil bulbs to plant, some irises to separate, some ditch lilies to separate. A rose bush to trim back because we've already had our frost and it's ready to go to bed for winter. And a crepe myrtle tree that's been let grown overgrow and it needs to be cut back a little bit too. So right. let's get to work. Get it already. This knockout rose bush, we kind of inherited it when we bought the place. Just about everything in this garden was inherited when we bought the place. And we're just trying to take care of it. But I don't know how long it has been since it's been trimmed or taken care of properly. But it was a little overgrown and taken over. And so we cut it back. It'll come back in the spring. Hello. Can you bring your clippers out here for a minute? I will. No, I'm your daddy. But I appreciate your help on this. My problem on this is I've got two trees here. One is a uh, my snowball bush, and then one is just a tree. It's not supposed to be here. It just is. This is the tree. I want you to cut it as far down as you can. Yeah. Don't you? I'm pretty sure this is the snowball bush. Done. Hey. What else do you need, Cut? Here we are starting on the crepe myrtle tree, realizing that he's going to need something bigger than the cloppers to cut it. It's growing in the power lines, so it's coming a little dangerous. Here Riley is not giving up and he is going to keep trying with those cloppers until he gets it cut. And as you see, he tries with all he has and he eventually gets it and goes for one more. And he's so excited that he got it, but it's stuck. <laughs> so Ricky showed up with his chainsaw and he's going to finish cutting the tree. And he makes quick work of it. And Riley is cutting the limbs off and he only took out the a uh, little watering can I have on the as a decoration but they get it done safely and hopefully take care of it better 
year after year and to let it get back to overgrown like it was. Here we're starting to separate the irises and the lilies. Now, irises are so easy to transplant. And you never have to worry about taking too much because I have never been able to get irises to stop growing somewhere. As long as you leave a little bit in the ground, they'll come back. Here, they were overgrown, so I took about 75% of what was there, what rhizomes was there. And I'll put them in other places in my yard and then give some away. Um, and then same thing with the ditch lilies. I mean, they spread quickly. And about every three to four years, I'll do this. And before you know it, I'll probably have irises all over the place and ditch lilies. But you don't have to worry about killing them. They're super easy to transplant. daffodils they are so easy to plant and in the springtime or late winter and they start to bloom it tells me springs just around the corner and it makes you a little happy so I'll probably end up planting a bunch of these because I absolutely love them they look beautiful when they're coming up through the snow sometimes and they just look beautiful everywhere now I don't know how true this is, but I was told once if you see daffodils out in the woods, that was usually someplace that was a somebody's original homestead. The house may not be standing anymore, but those daffodils are still there, which I think is kind of neat because I've seen a lot of patches, and I mean big patches of daffodils out just in the middle of the woods. So it's kind of cool to think, oh, there could have been a house there at one point in time, and I wonder how long it has been there. and everything but here I am again planting like some more daffodil bulbs and this was a I think a 40 pack bag I didn't get them all planted but my big issue big issue was trying to keep those chickens out of what I just planted these are the same chickens that we put in their winter coop but yet they have decided that they don't want to be there anymore so they've been hanging out in my garden they were root nesting not nesting roosting in that uh, crepe myrtle tree and now that it's gone they have to find someplace else to roost or I'll probably end up catching them and putting them in our enclosed pen where we keep our bainies <laughs>
Oh, hey guys. I think that's about it for today. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning up. And keeping the chickens out. And keeping the chickens out because that was their roosting tree. And we're going to see if we can deter them for roosting there. And uh, I think that's about it for today. And we'll catch you guys next time. Please like and subscribe our videos. Thank you.